Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you want to design and build a beautiful website, you can do it all in one place with Squarespace. Everybody trying to go, yeah, the party jumping off, and we putting on a show, trying to catch a vibe, we do this every time, like, na, 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 na. Hello, everybody, welcome to my studio, welcome to our quarantine hell, <laughs> no, <I'm just> kidding. <laughs> we are staying inside right now, I think Big you know plans. why, Sean's missing a table, my sister took my old table, it was actually her table, she gave it to me when she was moving out of her studio, because she had no space, and so I took it on, and now she's running an all-female studio space, so I gave it back, I think I've outgrown it, my criteria has changed, so Rocket's gonna build me a workbench, so romantic, <laughs> I don't like to reinforce negative gender stereotypes, but Rocket is very good at being handy and I'm very bad at it. Hooray for me! So he's gonna build me a new workbench. I want it to be lower, I want it to be smaller, and I want it to be more compact, less... We start the adventure. If this fails, well, what else are we doing? I don't really know what I want, so I want to show Rocket like an idea of what I like. Are they angry or are they just like... I don't know. Uh, it, it is also because there's no stuff in it. But I do like... Oh god, I like that. These are like suggested pins. This one's quite cool, but it is exactly what I didn't want. But I kind of like it. <laughs> that's really cool. Yeah. That's funny. It takes up a bit of space, but it's like, it, you know, interesting. Yeah. The more I look at it, I don't like it. But oh. <laughs> this is just a thought. <laughs> it's going to be expensive, but it's possible. I got, I got the cash. <laughs> I can find... Oh, look at this. I like the fact that it's metal underneath. Well, those are not welded. What is that pipe? It's like piping stuff. Can it's we probably, put that on wheels? Uh, yeah. This is where I want to be. Never ever gonna leave. You ain't in your life for me. How wide do you want it? Wider than this. Okay. This is the size of like my large pieces of paper. Cool. So I can work on four at a time if I ever need to do that. This is a really good size. It's like I'm really there. Watch your heart with your feet. Get out. Mm. That way. Just reverse. Go backwards. Stop stepping around in this place. Thank you, honey. Oh, an accident. Oh, much better job than this anyway. What an upgrade. The blessing in disguise. Pizza desk. I'm just wipe on the floor. I get the softer bow. For I'm the softer bow. <laughs> the steel legs. Mm -hmm. Because it's just to the manufacturer's length, mm -hmm. we have to kind of build around that. It's like 1.2 meters. I wonder if I'm 1.2 meters. No, I'm taller. <laughs> what are you saying? I think that it's time to go to sleep as it's 3 a.m. Never ever gonna leave So what's my options? Do you like that? Is that the first option? Yes, that's the first option. Now the second option, I've just scribbled now, so it's quite a uh, simple drawing. It's kind of like that. Oh, I like that. Okay, so Rocket has gone to get some of the materials for the desk, and while he's away, I'm going to start on this project. One of the things I wanted to do this year was to balance personal and commercial work just because last year I didn't really do that very well and I felt myself burning out. This is Project Manticore 2020. So it is a collaborative animation project with 30 plus incredible artists. Oh, thank you. And animators interpreting your theme. 1.5 seconds of each animation. So the theme is love. The goal is make something fun together, make a splash together, blee blah blah, blah. So I have to make a 24 frame per second, 1.5 second which is 36 frames animation, which is 1080 by 1080. Here are the colors that we're gonna be using. 
so this is difficult because this is not my normal color palette like probably something like this is going to be what i use I, I think i'll have to grab these hex codes and like put them together in photoshop and see what i like and the timeline which has been actually been changed because it is the second of april it's actually been changed to the sixth and yeah ben's gonna do everything else i have it pretty easy but it'd be fun to kind of go through the whole process with you guys because it's been a while since i've done that especially for personal work so last night i did some little doodles and thought about love i didn't really want to do anything that I personally loved because I think it's fun, more fun to do something playful or something that people can relate, a lot of people can relate to. I have like home is what the heart is, so like home, we're all at home at the moment. Plants, like whether it be like plants and water, plants and sunshine. This is Mother Earth holding the earth. I did a piece similar to that, so I didn't want to. And I love apples, so I think I'm going to go with this. So the animation is just going to be the apple getting slowly eaten away, and then a worm pops out with a little love heart on its head. See me walking by. Midnight. I got my fit right, rise and grind. Cleopatra and Ephrodite, yeah, you see me. Call me the CEO, I saw my checks, that queen. Self made, dues paid. Show me what you got. Sh -sh -sh Show me what you got. Beautifully laid out these little screws. So they're permanently there. I glued them in. Ah, yeah. <laughs> I don't tell you want them. And then once it's screwed in, like it's still quite solid now. <laughs> As you can tell. That is the sound of a solid table. Show me what you got. Oh baby. You look like a toddler. No, honey. It's okay. We have so much time. We have like six months of time. He did it. This is one and a half. He did it. This is. He's done it. The other half. We only need four packs. Well, we only need four track. packs. Yeah. We need 3.3 .3 packets. Yeah. So we got four. And we got an extra at home. Guys, just one more screw and the table's finished. At least for now. Point of view. I rock it. Turn it a little bit more like this. Yeah, that's point of view. Point of view, your rocket. It's as if you're the handy one, people watching. I didn't do anything. This is the people's table. This is the, pe <laughs> <laughs> this is the people's table. Check out this detail. Oh, he didn't have to do this, but he did. No one's gonna see it, but he can. Why don't we you like to scratch along a piece of timber? Ah, it's done. 
together equal parts work right. i helped just as much as rocket helped it's so easy it's like air hockey like a giant puck wow oh i turned my table easy no big deal let's see what it feels like ah time for a nice hard day's work is the height comfortable yeah it's so good it's perfect for me it might be a bit short for you Oh, this is so much better because when I had my other thing, it was like this. I was like, here, sit down and try. Yeah, so we can nice. have dinner on this, baby. Yeah, it's lovely. Rocky did it. Time to write my next novel. Once upon a time, a man made me a desk. The end. Time for a desk tour. Here's the top. Here's the legs. Hope you enjoyed this video. <laughs> There's the wheels. There's the wheels, they're there unlockable. Boom. Now you can't move it. It's unstoppable. I mean, it's stoppable. Oh my God, I'm so happy. Thank you, CD. Why'd you like it? Ouch. While Rocket was finishing the desk, I was doing this animation. It's only two seconds long. Rocket built a whole desk. I made a two second animation. I probably have to put this on screen because you can't really see the colors. It was stressful because it's only 1.5 seconds and so much has to happen in that short amount of time, but I'm really happy with my first attempt. I live. So it's just doing one minute, so one minute um, poses at the moment. We're on our third one. Okay. I'm gonna start. Now. These poses are really great. Oh god, it's so close. It's not good. It's not good, but it's fine. I'm gonna have scans of these on my page and I imagine I want to have one like this, but re really roughly colored in. So I've just scanned these as separate pieces of paper so that I get that nice little edge. Now comes the fun part. I'm gonna color this in like, a, like I'm a kid coloring this in, but I want it to look like out of the lines. I want it to look messy because I think that will look really cool like on my portfolio. Okay, did I go a bit overboard? This one, it looks like an adult has tried to color in like a kid. This one maybe passes. My favorite types of jobs are ones that are aimed at kids. I feel at home making stuff that's made for kids or that has like a sense of childlike wonder. So this was obviously like an actual project, but if you don't have something in your portfolio that you would like to work on, work on it first, show people that you can do it, and then you will eventually get jobs that are like that. So I'm gonna create a new gallery page. I'm gonna call it Together Gallery Coloring in Sheets. We'll see how long that is later. We can change that later if I don't end up liking it. And I'm going to drag these into here. Then they upload. A big part of storytelling is, is what you can do with the images. You can tell that these are coloring sheets. You know what I mean? I think I need to edit this, which I can do actually in Squarespace. It's really good because like often I will like need to tweak it afterwards. I'm just gonna bring the brightness up a little bit. Save. Oh, it looks good. Ah, when things just work. I always like to link like my clients because I think it allows people to explore the work that you create a little more without having to explain exactly what everything is. Yay, this looks really good. Okay, and then I want to look at what it looks like on my work page. This is what it looks like. That was easy, wasn't it? I want a relationship like Shana Squarespace. <laughs> That's so funny. Regardless of whether they sponsor my videos, I would be using Squarespace, so I can't recommend it more. You obviously saw how easy it was to update my website, so if that's not a testament to how good it is, I don't know what is. If you would like to try Squarespace, go to squarespace.com slash furrylittlepeach, you'll get a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. This 
vlog, I'm going to feature MidnightHappyFactory.com. Their work is so cute. And I promise I will feature like non-illustrators as well when I do this like every month. But so cute. Q&A time. Yay. It's been so long since I've done a Q&A because I didn't do one for my last video, I don't think. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Brainstorming ideas for children's books? Question mark. How do you know if they'd resonate well with kids? I actually am brainstorming my third book at the moment. So I've, I've had this idea for like a year and a half, but I'm only just putting it to paper because I want to submit it to my publisher. How do I know if my stories will resonate well with kids? I don't. I feel like it's my publisher's job to know that. And um, it's their job to know like if I need to write it differently, like if I'm using words that are too large for like the age group and stuff like that. I really rely on my editors and my publisher to, to know those things. So I'm very grateful to have them. Have you always had your creative style of doing your work or has it changed over time? I feel like style is something that changes all the time. Like I don't feel like I'll ever get to a point where I'm like, this is it. This is my style. This is like my visual style. I feel like the style that you have over time is like your voice, your creative voice. So like maybe the feel of the work is the same or like the uh, subject matter is similar throughout your like life. But I feel like a a good creative is constantly evolving. So I hope that I'm constantly evolving. My work when I started out was not like the work that I do now. So like, here's some pieces from like my first solo show. Boom, 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 boom. I used to only draw like nature. Like I never ever drew like man-made stuff. And then I started to draw objects and I thought it was really fun. So that's how my work's evolved as well. I feel like it's more simplified and more refined now. And also I'm a lot better at digital work than I used to be. It just takes practice, I guess. Do you ever want to work in a different style medium but feel restricted by your brand? Brand. Luckily, f luckily for me, like I've never really had to think too deeply about what work I want to make and what uh, avenues I want to go in. That doesn't mean I'm not th thoughtful about my work, but what I mean is like my brand is basically just my tastes. What I want, what I'm making is what I want to be making. If I ever want to work in a very different style, then I will transition to that style. I'm not really worried about it looking different. I think the only thing is um, sharing the process with your audience so that it's not like a really rude shock if you've just completely changed. Having said that, I've had friends that have gone from like really dark black and white stuff to really colorful, playful, childlike stuff and it's worked really well and they just came out like that. So, I mean, there's no rules to it and I feel like you should just do whatever you want. What are some differences you've noticed between your current book and Zoom? It's also book questions. The book that's coming out this year, the one that I've just finished is a lot different from Zoom. So I started working on Zoom in 2016. It came out in 2017. The style is kind of different. I feel like the complexity of like the illustrations is different. I used a lot of pencil in this one. I didn't do that for the last one. It's more character driven as well, which I'm excited about. So like it's more focused on like um, characters being driven through a story and through like a world, whereas Zoom was kind of like the concept was to introduce kids to like the solar system. So it wasn't as much about Scout, who's like the main character. Scout is more there to move move us through the story whereas this one is very character driven and i don't know how to explain it i'm just excited for you guys to see it because i'm really proud of it how has covid impacted the way you work as an artist uh not much i feel like i stayed at home a lot and i said this a lot to like friends and stuff but i feel like i went outside more than i thought but having said that i feel like my work hasn't changed that much like i'm pretty unaffected thankfully um, I still got a lot of the work that I had on for this year. Like, nothing's been cancelled for me. I know it's different for other people, especially in the creative community. And also I, I already worked from home. I didn't really have as, as big an adjustment as a lot of other people. So I feel very grateful. Um, but also I do miss going to the library and going to cafes, but that's like not that big of a deal. What advice would you give someone in their last year at university studying art? Hey, university. Feels like such a lifetime ago. <laughs> I feel like my advice might be different to your situation just because I studied design. I studied art and design, but I majored in graphic design. But my advice to uni students is always make sure you're doing stuff outside of university because once you get out of uni, you don't just get automatically handed a job. Looking at your portfolio, I think people can usually tell when you're when it's uni work. But just you just have to be careful of only doing assignments. But I would be actively looking for like internships or assistant jobs or a job in whatever you want to end up doing. A degree is not what's going to get you a job. I feel like it's your passion and your enthusiasm and your personality and, 
uh, your the level of charisma that you have and like your ability to work well with others you know what i mean so don't just focus on uni work because the degree itself is not i feel like it's not that important it's just been my experience that no one's ever asked me for, for my degree ever like i've never shown my degree to anyone it's more like portfolio driven and like personality driven i guess my advice was don't is don't just fall back on your degree and just don't don't just fall back onto uni work because it's not the only thing that people are going to be looking at i think it's easy to imagine that once you get out of uni you'll land a job like that but that's just not how it works all the time that's all i got well that's not all i got i got a lot of questions but like that's all i'm gonna make time for because otherwise this video is gonna be too long i hope you guys like this video i thought it was so fun like, oh, when I found the music, I was so stoked because I just feel like it matches the footage and stuff like that. Also, thank you to Rocket for voting me a work, bitch. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you super soon. And let me know what you're up to and what you've been doing in quarantine. If you want to answer those questions that people ask me as well, I would love, like, I love when my comments is like a forum and you guys have your input too because it really is like an ecosystem and I love like seeing your point of view and like learning about you guys like genuinely so please let me know if you want to and if you want to share any of your opinions on those questions please do and yeah I'll see you soon bye